Hi, I'm Dave again with EVM TV, Ephesians Vision Ministry, and we have an exciting story to tell you about today. Mary Limby has had a couple of occasions where God, literally, the Holy Spirit, brought her back from the dead. Yes. Uh, tell me your story. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I was having, um, I was in my 50s then, I'm 64 now, and um, I was having a uh, hysterectomy. And um, I had prayed up about it. I didn't want to do it, but it was something that had to be done because I was constantly hemorrhaging. And I went in with faith and with prayer, and my whole church stood beside me and went in for surgery. And what had happened was that uh, when they started the surgery procedure, they ran the IV that puts you to sleep very fast instead of very slow. And I had the experience of my, of my spirit literally leaving my body and hovering over myself. And I, I was on the ceiling and I could see myself. And I was dying. And um, it lasted for, I, I felt it was a very long time. Finally, when I did wake up uh, and I was better and I was okay from the surgery, the doctor had said to me, um, it's very rare. He says, this, we don't see this happen very often. He said, but uh, when we removed your, your uh, uterus, it completely disintegrated in our hands. And he said, it must be a miracle. He said, because you should be covered in cancer, but you're totally clean. Uh, he said, how did you feel about the surgery? And I had told him what had happened. And he said, well, that's not normal because when we do a procedure to put a person under, mm -hmm. the very first thing we do is that we put in the IV slowly yeah. because the last thing to fall asleep is the brain. The okay. first thing to fall asleep is the feet. This doctor went gun ho the, the anesthesiologist, I don't know if he was brand new or what, went super fast. Yeah. And so I felt myself literally suffocating and unable to breathe and gasping for air. Okay. And then I knew in my heart that I was dying because I saw, my, I saw myself come out of my body and just hover over the ceiling looking down. And the only thing I could say was, help me, Jesus. And the Lord brought me back. And to, that was the first experience that I had. And How I did was, you know it was the Lord bringing you back? Was, what, did you see hands or what no, happened? No, no. I just, I literally sensed an entity. And I knew it was Christ. Because there was a warmth around me. Because when I left my body, I was ice cold. Okay. And when I said, in the name of Jesus, Father, help me, you know, come, let me come back. My body came back and I felt this heat. It was literally around my body, and I knew it was God. Okay. And, you know, it's, you feel a, a security and just a love that you know that no matter what happens, you're going to be okay. You're in the hands of God. That was the first time. Uh, the second time was another surgery that was done to me for something else. And uh, this time they went too far. Okay. Okay. And uh, they figured that everything was okay. And I, I knew in my heart that I couldn't wake up. And all of a sudden, the Spirit of God clicked in, and I woke up. Now, Amazing. Yes. Now, the Lord had made it known to me when I came here first to Oregon, because I'm from California. Okay. I came here in 2007. I came to this church about a year ago. The Spirit of God made it known to me, you have the spirit of death on you. It has to be relieved. You have to be relieved of that. Okay. And so I believed, and the ministers and the pastor here prayed over me, and the spirit of death left. And the Lord told me in my heart, you now have the spirit of life within you. So the breath of life lives inside of me. The last experience I had, which I really thought, that, this was the third experience, I really thought I was going to die. I went into uh, uh, a very harsh and very hard uh, menopause for the first time in my life. My doctor did not give me anything. He did not uh, prep me or tell me or teach me or show me anything. He just figured that I would know what to do. I left him. I was with him for 28 years. So to make a long story short, I went into menopause and the thyroid went up. And because of that, I had to go to an endocrinologist, which is a thyroid doctor. And I didn't pray and I didn't think because I was too nervous. And the doctor looked at me and said, well, we're going to give you these pills. I took this medication. And what happened is that it activated the thyroid more and it forced it to grow. 
And so I wound up losing 52 pounds in less than nine months from an overactive thyroid because of the medication. And one day I was down to 113 pounds. I'm five foot five and a half, and my weight should be between 120 to 135 or 140. I was down to 113. My knees hit the ground, and I cried out to Jesus. And I said, Lord Jesus, please help me. Show me what to do. And I heard a voice come to me and say to me with a great deal of love, a very sweet, small voice, leave this doctor and go to Dr. Sal. The appointment is at 12 o'clock. You will be there. My husband at the time was walking about two blocks away because we live by the ocean, doing his annual constitutional walk. The same message that came to me came to him. He came home running and told me what had happened. We called up doc the doctor's office, and I figured, well, I'm going to get a secretary. I got, I got instead. This is Dr. John M. Sow. How may I help you? And I knew that was divine intervention. So he said, he said uh, I eat at 12 o'clock, but I'm going to take off my 12 o'clock lunch. I'll wait for you. And I knew it was God. So we got in the car, and we went down there. He checked me out. He said to me, you're suffering from this and this and this and this, and it comes from this pill. He says, you take this pill any longer, you're going to die. So he took me off of the pill. My throat started to close. He told me to take an Ativan, and I did. My throat opened. And I have been without any drugs of any kind for thyroidism since the year 2006. And the last time I went to go checked up for the thyroid, the doctor said to me, you don't have any cancer. You don't have anything. You haven't grown. Your thyroid is the same it was when you first came here in 2006. So I'm praising the Lord because he has, he has done a great thing. And he has taught me to trust in my healing, and I am praying to God that one day I also will be able to teach healing. And God has made it known to me, in the future you will walk in the gift of healing, and you will teach people, women, about menopause and about the thyroid condition, and they will go to the Word of God, and they will believe, and they'll be set free. You have frequent flyer miles as far as being brought back from the dead. Yes. What would you tell folks who may be going through cancer, maybe going through very serious medical situations or trials in their lives and are wondering if God hears their prayers, mm -hmm. if God heals today, and if, if they're worthy. A lot of people just don't feel worthy. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. God won't heal me because I'm not a good enough person. Mm -hmm. What would you tell those folks today? Well, first of all, let's go to worthiness. Uh, I was brought up the same way with low self-esteem and rejection, and God healed me. Well, how would he do that? What the Lord did is that he came to me in the middle of the night and he came up to my ear and spoke to me. And I heard him say to me, I died on the cross not just because to give you salvation. I died on that cross because to me, saith the Lord, you are worthy. Your worth is in me. First of all, you cannot be loved any more than you're loved already. Everything has been done on the cross in Jesus Christ. Second of all, it is normal for people to be afraid because we're all afraid of the unknown. Right. But we, that is why we are called Christian and Christ-like, that we take a step of faith to believe that God can control your life. You have to want to allow God to control your life. You know, a lot of people say, well, I don't understand, you know, how, how can you, how can this person love this other person when they don't love themselves? Well, first of all, you have to allow God to love you so that you can love yourself so that you can love others now having cancer and those type of things mm -hmm. I've never gone through but I do know one thing and that is that God's word is real it's not a lie I it's not a fairy tale No, I haven't come this far to go back okay and people that have cancer I would say this to them hold on to the Word of God because it is not void it is not empty God is real he loves you he is there for 